hello. So now we're actually going to go ahead and implement uh, a multi-stage amplifier at the transistor level. So I have drawn uh, the three stages that we have studied, common collector, common emitter, common collector. So you should be able to identify the first stage. Obviously the input signal is being fed through a coupling capacitor, uh, but this first stage here, that's just a common collector amplifier or an emitter follower, uh, then it's followed by a, um, a common emitter stage, and then another common collector stage at the output. Um, notice that I've added coupling capacitors, CC1, CC2, CC3, and CC4, uh, not just uh, at the input and at the output, but also in between stages. And again, those are just so that the uh, DC bias point of one circuit won't be affected by the adjacent stage. Um, let's go ahead and design, try to design uh, an amplifier similar to the one, uh, the common emitter amplifier that we designed with a gain of negative 50, uh, but with the following specifications uh, that are in B greater than 100 kilo ohms and are out be less than one kilo ohm. So um, for the gain of negative 50, we can just set up the same resistance values that we had for our common emitter amplifier stage previously. I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, and I haven't really uh, entered resistor names. I'm just going to go ahead and enter values directly. We had um, our one here was equal to 220K. This was 20 kilo ohms, 20 kilo ohms. Uh, if you remember, we had a split the emitter resistance to get the gain of negative 50 into uh, 350 and 1.65 uh, K. This CPE capacitor, that was the emitter uh, bypass capacitor, so that we will get uh, the high gain without altering the DC bias point for the circuit. Uh, and now we're going to design the common collector stages, input stage and output stage, to get those uh, characteristics. So this is so far a common emitter stage with a gain of 50. All right, let's go ahead and design the input stage. And as we have done uh, previously, we're going to select uh, a collector current, quiescent current. And just for simplicity, I'm going to select uh, 0.5 milliamps for all my circuit, um, the common collectors and the common emitter. So collector current of 0.5 milliamps. Next, I was selecting uh, our emitter resistor so that my uh, output voltage will be centered around VCC. And so in this case, our E center. Output. So RE was equal to VE divided by IC or uh, VCC halves over IC, which is 10 over 0.5 milli or 20K. That's my emitter resistor here. Next, I'm going to choose R1, R2, um, and just like I did in the previous example, I'm going to select uh, R1 equals R2 equals um, 400. And that will give me a, a parallel combination of R1 and R2. Uh, approximately equal to uh, 200k, which is larger than the, the 100k that I need for my R in. There are other factors that are going to come into play, uh, but as we shall see, this is actually the determining resistance for the input resistance, is that parallel combination of R1 and 2. Um, and this was to set VB. As we mentioned before, in reality, if you choose the resistors to be equal to each other, VB is going to be sitting at uh, half VCC divided by 2 or at 10 volts, and then VE is going to shift uh, down by 0.7 volts, 
but it's a, a price that we're going to be willing to pay for simplicity. Um, all right, in this case, then R1 in parallel with R2 will be equal to 200 kilo. So I'm going to enter those values. This is 400k and 400k. Now we can calculate the input resistance R in as being equal to R1 in parallel with R2 in parallel with the resistance seen when looking into the base of the uh, first transistor. And so that's going to be beta times by the reflection rule little re of transistor 1. I'm going to label the transistors EC, Q1, Q2, and Q3. So a little re1 uh, plus RE. I'm going to label it as 1 since it's connected to transistor 1. This is equal to um, R1 in parallel with R2 is 200 kilo ohms. In parallel with, I'm going to assume beta to be equal to 100. And um, R E1 uh, is going to be equal to 50. I guess we haven't calculated it, but since we're going to make all the quiescent collector currents for the three circuits equal to um, 5, 0.5 milliamps, all of the little arrays are going to be equal to Pt, which is 25 millivolts at uh, room temperature divided by 0.5 milliamps which is 50 ohms and that applies to all three stages so this is 50 plus 20k again 200k in parallel with 2 gig is approximately equal to 200k so we're meeting our um, specification that the input resistance is greater than uh, 100k now notice that we want the output resistance to be less than one kilo ohm so if we just apply, copy the same values for our output stage as we had for the input stage, the output resistance is going to be um, closer to uh, 2 kilo ohms, as we previously calculated. And so uh, we need to change some values in order to get that a little bit lower. So we're going to go ahead and design our output stage, fresh new design. We are going to choose the same value of IC, 0.5 milliamps. We're going to choose um, RE again to get the V out close to the center point. Let's Three halves over IC, 10 over 0.5 milli, um, or 20 kilo ohms. Now I'm going to choose um, R1, R2 to set VB. Um, I'm going to apply the, uh, the same rule. I'm going to uh, choose R1 and R2. Uh, to be equal to each other for simplicity. Uh, and so it's going to really center VB as opposed to VE. But uh, I'm going to pick different values. And the reason for that um, is that if you recall, R out for this stage um, was equal to, I guess we should calculate it for the previous stage as well. So let me go ahead and do that. So R out for this stage. Um, is equal to, and again, we're looking at the output resistance um, at that emitter terminal from the, for the first transistor, which is the output of the first stage. So we have RE1 in parallel with little re1 plus 1 over beta times the resistance is connected to the base. 1 over beta times the parallel combination of R1, R2 assuming uh, negligible uh, resistance from the input source. Uh, so our E1 is 20K. 
in parallel with 50 plus 200k divided by beta, which is 100. So this is 20 kilo ohms in parallel with, and uh, 50 plus 2k, I'm going to approximate as uh, 2k. And so our out will be approximately equal to 2 kilo ohms. And again, we just mentioned these same values will not work for our um, output stage because we want an output resistance to be less than one kilo ohm. So I'm going to go ahead and calculate both my input and output resistance for the output stage now. Resistance with these new values. Oh, I guess we haven't put values just yet. Okay. Uh, so yeah, we were talking about how we wanted to select R1, R2, uh, but notice that the parallel combination of R1 and R2 play a significant role in determining the output resistance of the common collector amplifier. And specifically, the output resistance ends up being approximated as R1 in parallel with R2 divided by beta. And so um, we want to make sure that that does not exceed 1 kilo ohm. Uh, in the previous case, it was 2 kilo ohms, and so if I were to choose half the values for R1 and R2, that will give me 1 kilo ohm. Um, so we could go for that or anything lower. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and choose a little bit lower. I'm going to go with um, 100 kilo ohms for R1 and R2. R1 equals to R2 equals 100 kilo ohms. And that way, when I do the parallel combination, that will give me 50 kilo ohms. Um, and when I divide it by beta, it will give me 500 ohms for the output resistance. So this means R1 in parallel with R2 is equal to 50. So calculating my R in for this stage, once I enter my values, this is 100k, 100k, and 20k. This will be R1 in parallel with R2 in parallel with beta times R little re3 plus the emitter resistance connected to the third transistor, which is now um, 50k in parallel with 100 times 50 plus 20k. And um, 20k uh, plus 50 is approximately 20k. Multiply times 100 is going to give me 2 gig. And so still, the 50k is going to dominate that parallel combination. So R in will be approximately equal to 50 kilo ohms. And R out will now be R e3 in parallel with little r e3 plus 1 over beta um, R1 in parallel with R2. RE3 is 20k in parallel with 50 plus uh, 50k divided by beta. Uh, so this will be uh, 20k in parallel with approximately 50k divided by a beta of 100. Will this give me 500? Because 50 will be 550. Uh, that is going to dominate the parallel combination since it's much smaller than the 20k. And so this is going to be approximately equal to uh, 550 ohms. Um, now, in order to see whether I have met my design specifications, I will need not only to look at whether I've met the input and output resistances, which I've already seen that I have met them. In fact, my input resistance for the overall circuit is 200k, and my output resistance is 550 ohms. But we need to uh, figure out whether the gain is uh, can be considered to be negative 50. And that will be the case if I don't have substantial loading factors. And so I need to calculate the loading factors between my stages. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and calculate my loading factor number one for the interface between the input stage and the gain stage, which is going to be um, my input resistance 
into the second stage divided by my output resistance for my first stage plus the input resistance into my second stage. So entering appropriate values, I'll have load in factor one is equal to, now the input resistance um, into my common emitter amplifier, uh, we calculated it earlier for the common emitter stage and it was 20 kilo ohms. So that will be 20K divided by the output resistance for my uh, common collector, we just calculated to be 2K, so 2K plus 20K. And we can see that since uh, this is met, uh, that the, the output resistance for the first stage is much lower than the input resistance for the following stage, the loading will be negligible. This is approximately equal to 1. It's actually 0.9, but close enough to 1. My loading factor for the second interface between gain stage and output stage will be equal to R in for the third stage divided by R out of the second stage plus R in of the third stage. Uh, my input resistance for the common collector output stage is 50 kilo ohms. We just calculated it. So 50K. And my output resistance for the um, common emitter amplifier was equal to RC, which is 20K plus 50k. So we can see that uh, here uh, this is going to be something um, fairly substantially lower than 1. And the reason for that is uh, 50k, even though it is larger than 20k, it's more than twice the size of, uh, of 20k, uh, it's not really meeting the condition that uh, it be an order of magnitude larger at least. And so we expect that there's going to be substantial loading uh, in between those two stages. How do we go about fixing that? Well, uh, in order to uh, increase the value of the loading factor, making it closer to one, we will need to go ahead and uh, decrease, uh, or excuse me, increase the value of the input resistance. Um, and we can see the input resistance was approximately equal to um, R1 in parallel with R2 which was 50k. So if we wanted to make that higher, we will need to increase the values of R1 and R2. Let's imagine we made them 200. Uh, 200k each will give me an equivalent uh, parallel combination of 100k. Now, that, that will make my loading factor a little bit closer to what it needs to be. It will be 100k divided by 20k plus 100k that will drive me to the edge of my uh, output resistance specification. My output resistance will be uh, approximately equal to 1K, which is sort of my spec. It will be slightly lower, but approximately equal. Uh, so if I wanted to um, still keep my low output resistance and uh, maintain a gain of 50, then my next step will be playing with the common emitter amplifier and trying to increase its gain a little bit, just so that when I multiply it times the loading factors, I still get a gain of approximately negative. So this gives you an idea for how um, the design of really any amplifier, but especially as they get more complex, it's going to require a little bit of a, a spiraling process, an iterative process where you um, do an, an original design and then figure out if it meets the specifications, and then you may need to go back and tweak little things here and there. Uh, keeping in mind your trade-offs to, um, to fine-tune your final result. Thank you.